This has been the U.S. Bank NBC Sports Report. Des Moines Golf and Country Club is the site. 24 players from the United States and Europe in what is the best rivalry in women's golf. It's the final chance, the final day of the Solheim Cup. Sunday at the Solheim Cup is just electric. It's kind of a do or die thing. I would say that's one of the best Sundays of all time in golf. That's when the fighter comes out and you. It's a make or break kind of day. There's 12 points at stake. Anything can literally happen. When everybody's going against you, you just have to be tough. You have to make a lot of putts to shut them up just a little bit. You leave nothing out on the table and you play for that red, white, and blue. Sunday is intense. Your one job is to go out and win your match to get a point on the board, and that's all you can do. We're here to take that cup back to Europe. We all want to win. We all want to keep that cup here. We all want to get those people a lot of stuff to yell about. Solheim Cup is decided on Sunday. You just better be ready to play. Channel on NBC is proud to present a premier international golf competition. It's final day coverage of the 15th Solheim Cup. Record crowds this week here in West Des Moines. The American fans more to cheer about, but the European fans haven't given up hope yet. USA! 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 Out in full force on this Sunday here in Iowa. The play has been spectacular to this point. The U.S. has just been better, and they start this final day with a five-point lead, and the Euros needing the largest comeback ever if they are to win the Solheim Cup. Along with Judy Rankin, I'm Terry Gannon, Tom Abbott alongside, Jerry Foltz, Kate Cockrell, Jim Gallagher Jr., Karen Stupples out on the golf course with the matches, Grant Boone to talk to the captains from time to time, Kendra Graham, in case we have any questions with the rules. As we get things underway here in Iowa, we send it over to Scott Walker. And Terry, thank you. Let's get everyone caught up on what's been going on in the matches thus far. And if Europe is to make that all-time comeback win, they will need to start fast, including the first match, on a Nordquist. She'd won the first three holes. This is her approach to four. And for a player who has been unbeaten all week, this was a dream start for Team Europe. Norquist has been battling the effects of mononucleosis for about a month or so, but in this emotionally charged week, she has maintained her energy and she got off to a four-up lead. Now, after Thompson won number six, this is the ninth hole and Norquist's approach. So once again, Anna Nordquist, a brilliant shot into nine. She would win that and go to the back nine with a four-up lead. But Thompson fighting back. Three up at this point on 11. And that is a brilliant shot. Holes out from the fairway. And Lexi Thompson, the number two ranked player in the world, making this a match in this opening singles match. Now, Paula Creamer versus Georgia Hall. Hall, a young player from England and this is her approach it's an eagle chip that would go down after Paula Creamer won a couple of holes early the young Georgia Hall coming back now Creamer match all square this a birdie on 10 and Paula Creamer's experience the alternate playing well here in this singles match. Now, match four, this is Stacey Lewis versus another alternate, Katrina Matthew for Team Europe, and Lewis won three of the first four holes in this match. 
This on number three. And a brilliant tee shot there. She would win that hole and again win three of the first four. So the U.S. putting a lot of flags up on the leaderboard early, including Lizette Salas here. She was one down. This is on number two. And this, another one that's hold from off the green. You can see the emotion that is bubbling up on this day in West Des Moines, Iowa. Now, Danielle Kang in the last singles match, the KPMG Women's PGA Champion. This a long birdie effort to go down and Kang would win that. So the U.S. showing a lot of life trying to make sure Team Europe does not make that big comeback. And now let's go back to the action on the golf course. Go over to 15 where Alexi will be putting first for an eagle. It's not an easy one. He bends a ton from the right and it's pretty slippery looking. That last camera shot gave you a pretty good idea about the slope in this green from the back to the front. Just needs to keep running out. Needs to keep running out, and it does. For the tail of two nines. Wow. Every now and then you can give yourself the goosebumps. I love watching the crowd in moments like this. people will remember. Rocky on the steps. Yeah, when they came. Exercise we've seen for a while jumping up like that. Now Norquist starved the hole. Well, I would say this is the easier of the two putts as it was before they putted. Yeah. No longer the case. Slightly uphill. This misses and the match is all square. Well, as you thought she had it just a fraction too hard and Lexi Thompson has battled back from four down at the turn to all square with three holes to play and the momentum has swung right into Lexi Thompson's favour. And let's take a look back at what happened. It was a nervy start for Thompson. This was at the first. The putt that you would expect her to make 99 times out of 100 when she's practicing, but the pressure was on and it changed. The miss putt at the third, and suddenly she was three down after three. It would get worse because Norquist had this for a birdie at the fourth to go four up after just four holes. This is a day where the Europeans needed to come out strong. They really can't afford to make many mistakes at all. And at the ninth, Norquist was three up. Thompson spinning the ball off the green. Norquist hitting it in tight. And that would mean four up. But then things changed. Lexi would win the 10th, and this, one of the highlights of the week so far, the 11th. That meant she was just two down. And 
there is still more to come. This at 13, this was just quality. Fabulous tee shot, and then this second one, Judy. Yeah, by virtue of a fabulous tee shot that was fabulously long. And then the chance to tie it up just a moment ago. The snaking eagle putt, which went right in on the side door. Square as they head to the 16th tee. Absolutely remarkable and a turnaround, Judy, that has a speeth like essence to it. Somehow, after being so rattled, absolute belief and now confidence and now momentum. That was three would play into the widest part of the fairway, and that's going to be in just fine shape. And what about the uh, what about the mental attitude at this moment of Anna Nordquist, who is not shaken by many things? Well, this was the area of the course with the most people. That was the loudest roar I've heard in ages. But Anna doesn't seem to be unfazed by bad shots or great shots of this one right down the middle. What would you have wagered earlier today <laughs> against the fact that we'd be at this point in the match? All square, three to play. I thought the odds were big time against it. The house, the ranch, inheritance for the kids, grandkids, all gone. I'm keeping the kids. <laughs> Today's coverage of the Solheim Cup is brought to you by the new Ping G400 driver, a faster speed of flight. By Rolex, global partner and official timekeeper of the Solheim Cup. Pure Silk, shake up your shave with new Pure Silk razors. And by Volunteers of America, helping America's most vulnerable. Back at 14, Paula Creamer. This for birdie to win the hole. Lost the last hole to go one down for the first time today. And another good one going right down to the end. Back to the 11th. But a 20-foot putt for Lizette Salas upcoming. This is Jody Hewitt shot off third. <coughs> oh, really good. That could go in. Gorgeous. That's going to be a tap-in birdie. And we'll go to 16. Nordquist from the fairway now. 141 yards away. Ball slightly above her feet. This is a smooth eight iron. Very little eight iron there. Just a little right of the hole. Uh, a shot that is a settling moment, you would imagine. And needs it right now. A pretty golf swing, and I talked about it earlier, but she takes that little nip kind of divot, um, not a digger at all, and lets the... Uh, Goes yeah, down after that. Right down his throat. Lexi just two yards closer, but two clubs less. That's a pitching wedge from 139. Hold it. Hold it. Very good. Two very reasonable birdie opportunities. Now it's putting contest. And there's been a few times today when it seemed like that's what it was anyway. Well, the first four holes she was lagging behind. Took her a while to get up to the green to get to the next tee. Right now she's racing up to get to the green. A little different, the divot. 
<laughs> a little bit. <laughs> 13. Christy Kerr has two putts to win the hole here. And she is going to just pick that one up. So that puts Christy Kerr two up. Mel Reed may have already walked to the tee, I think. So Christy plays it safe. It might not sit well with Christy Kerr. <laughs> You're at 12, Angel Yin, for birdie to win the hole. Already one up in the match. Get in, get in! Yeah. Oh. Going in from everywhere. I, I told you, it's that time of the show. <laughs> Youngster against veteran. Youth served. Lizette Salas has this to halve the hole. We saw the approach from Jody Hewitt Shadoff. Another one go in now, it just drifts the other way at the very end. So that'll take the match back to all square. USA five. The match is all square. Now go back to sixteen. So first of two here and a Nordquist. This has become such a compelling match. Uh, Who would have thought? <laughs> it, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, Judy. So we've seen some incredible golf for three days now. I've even seen a lot of articles and a few tweets and other social media things from fans on both sides of the Atlantic, regardless of who they're rooting for. One of them coming in from Trish Johnson yesterday, a former competitor in this as well, saying that yesterday was the greatest day of televised women's golf she had ever seen in terms of quality of golf. Today, she might have to send that one again. Well, I love to see every one of these players forget what side they're on. I love to see them shine when they have a really big moment. And I'll tell you what helps you shine. It is the emotion of the crowd. There is something about um, the best athletes in their sport in the world who rise to that occasion. The people um, and their emotion, um, their appreciation of great play, I, I can't put my finger on it. I can only tell you it matters. What's more fulfilling, jolt, jolting a, a home crowd or silencing an away crowd? <laughs> Think about it. Watch the putt first. A little quick. Not a ton of break. Mm, just didn't have the pace for that. I mean, there is something really satisfying in being away and shutting everybody up. 15. Paula Creamer is first to play with the second shots. Has a good life from the fairway. Her opponent in the first cut, that was five wood, struck beautifully. Oh. That was really good. Great shot. Paula Creamer's singles career um, started when the Solheim Cup was at Cricket Stick. And her first single match ever as a rookie. She defeated the great Laura Davies, seven and a five. Lexi Thompson now for birdie to win the hole and actually take the lead in this opening match. Like that had a lot better. Do you? Mm -hmm. The other one was working better for this match then. They are, as a team, really, really surveying every single putt. They've gotten them all right of late. And I have to credit Kevin McAlpine again. I know he hasn't hit a shot in competition for Lexi ever, but he's such a huge help and has handled her so well. Not only at the ANA after the rules debacle on the final round, but after today's miserable, miserable start, somehow getting her to believe in herself. This one turning a little right.
one of the more remarkable turnarounds you will ever see in match play. Every great player in this game has an enormous will to get the job done. This is when you're willing it done. Was it just in a golf sense? From an emotional standpoint, what happened to her early and now where she is leading in the match. Incredible. He's a ball striking, tractor riding, South African tour de force who just happens to have a Clara Jug in his trophy case. Don't miss an all new Faherty with Louis Oostazen tomorrow at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, hand on the shoulder from Annika and Norquist. <laughs> Looks pretty unhappy, doesn't she? Yeah, she can be too unhappy. I mean, Lexi Thompson has. Uh, played some of the best golf I think I've ever seen on this back nine, Jerry. Eight under through seven holes with a par, Tom. And even though it was a conceded birdie on 13, she did stick around and make it. And she's going with six iron here. Oh. Didn't try and kill it, trying to chase it up the right side with the slope, take care of it. Yeah, didn't get it there. Yeah, the number's 193 to the hole. A little opening now for Nordquist. He's going to know that you need to make birdies in this match to win a hole. Maybe even eagles. Yeah, to tie a hole. <laughs> it's just uh, speechless. You know, I think they were looking um, as if they made some kind of error in the yardage. Yeah, you saw it looking down at, at the book. Yeah. Anna is... Can you be more than completely stoic? I mean, she is not cracking a smile. And Annika put a hand on her shoulder and there was no response. I can understand that she is uh, upset because she would have known that this was an essential match to win early. And she had Lexi Thompson on the ropes at four up. Well, she was playing anybody else, arguably, in the field today. She probably would be done by now with the win. She's played such good golf. About a four iron on a good line, but there's some slope left of the hole. Yeah, get my drift down into the rough. And that is going to be a little awkward for Norquist because, as we know, she doesn't like to chip the ball and may well have to putt it. It's a pretty long putt from down there. It's a pretty long chip from the front of the green for Lexi Thompson also. Fifteenth hole, eagle putt to win the hole. A fast 20 footer that curls down to the left. We know how much break this has on it, Kay. We just saw Thompson hole one on pretty much the same line and that's not going to get there. Paul has a four footer for Gertie herself. Square. Let's go to the 13th where Katrina Matthew has this to win the hole. She's actually had to hole a really good putt for her bogeys. And Katrina Matthew has battled back from three down, just won the last two holes. So Lewis one up with five to play in that match. Let's go back to Georgia Hall. Needs to make this for a half. Yeah, this to avoid losing two holes in a row. Good four from the 21 year old. So there is less blue on the board right now. And Judy, look at those first matches. The, the first one, obviously, the dramatic one that jumps out. But Creamer all square and then three straight wins for the United States. Yeah, I, I felt like um, one way or another, Christy Kerr would find a way to get it done today. Um, a nice news um, that Angel Yin is up in her match, uh, the rookie. Well, we take a look back in time, presented by Rolex two years ago. What is it? Class Style USA!
It was Julie Inkster and the U.S. needing a major comeback. Michelle Lee rolling over Caroline Headwall. 30 on the front nine, six and four the win. And a little glimpse into things to come. Jarena Pillar, this was the putt of the day though. On the 18th hole, one up. She made it to defeat Caroline Masson, and it gave the Americans life. They still had a chance. Angela Stanford closing it out as they won seven of the last eight matches of the day to capture the Solheim Cup, 14 and a half to 13 and a half. So it's an even bigger comeback needed for Europe today. A look back in time by Rolex and Take you back 40 minutes ago, it looked like it was very much possible. It still is because so many of these matches are tight. But the U.S. has turned things around in the most dramatic turnaround. Those numbers, that player, that athlete, somehow, some way, finding it within herself to be a different player on the second night. That's like mostly what are they going to do here, Jerry? Well, you got to play. You got to play one release back there. You can't try and fly it back there and check it per se. Although that is an option, if she's more comfortable with it. I think she'll hit the low one, a couple bounces, and start to check up a little bit. It's going to roll left and the green. Once it gets to a, kind of the apex, the green slopes slightly away. Anything past the hole, two or three or four feet, is off the green left. for the rest of the day. And Alexa Thompson may have done enough to secure at least a half point. And when Norquist was four up, you know, word would filter through to the rest of the European team members that uh, Chris was playing so well and doing exactly what she needed to do in that first match out but now that story would have changed completely and of course if the US wins this which they have a great chance of doing and then they move ever closer to securing the cup and uh, won't be too many points away. Norquist is going to putt it. Yeah there was never going to be much doubt about that in the second cut of friends still a little bit of grass in front of her that's likely to make this bobble. It's pretty severely uphill the first, uh, I'd say two-thirds. Should move a little left as well. Getting the speed right on this is no bargain. And a lot of red on the board. in the most real sense that I can. When you play in a stroke play golf tournament and somebody just plays lights out, it's pretty easy to say, you know, she was just wonderful today. I got outplayed. When it's player against player, it's a little hard to face up to that and accept it. Angel Yin to win the hole. Surprised that they gave her that. Looked like a you to see that uh, nine times out of ten, but obviously Gavini Shea wanted to move on. Back to the 17th, where the Norquist has to make this. Otherwise, uh, it could be over. Chris misses and Lexi makes. Lexi wins the match. Oh no, it's always right. Okay, I can miss 
screen there, Judy. Yeah, it very much did look like a misread because it seems to be a pretty good stroke. Tiny bit of right to left in it, and she probably got it out there four inches or so. And Lexi Thompson now has a putt to complete one of the biggest turnarounds I think I've ever seen in uh, the Solheim Cup. And not because of poor play from Norquist, because of absolutely outstanding golf from Lexi Thompson. Unthinkable golf. It's that's the definition of unbeatable on the back. Tom, she went from playing three holes of the worst golf of perhaps her entire life to now on the eighth hole of probably the best nine of her life. Or she missed what a three footer on the first and shanked a wedge on the second. And half shanked a nine iron on the third. when it looked like a uh, full point was in the bag. The golf gods just didn't want this one to end. And it's good goalkeeping there. So think back to that last tee for Anna Nordquist. Pretty much on the verge of tears right now to belief that maybe I can earn a half. Got a lot of Saganda to win the hole at the 11th. Oh. Yeah, some Spanish support out there. Match against Brittany Lincecum. This is at 15. Second shot for Christy Kerr. The read is just short of the green. It's 189 yards. This is a five iron. Looks awfully good. Dead left, dead left, dead left. Dead left. Demanding. Let's go to 18. So Lexi ready to go on the tee now. Clubbing back here because the fairway is about twice as wide if you leave it short of those bunkers and if you try and hit it in the little narrow sliver of a fairway left of them. You want to give it? How about that off the tee? <laughs> Center of. Anna going with driver. I think she can get it to the rough short of those bunkers if it goes right, but she is one of the straightest drivers of the golf ball in women's golf. All right, center of the fairway. Mm, does hop over, yep. And with that driver ahead of Lexi Thompson. So new life, at least some life for Anna Nordquist after the miss by Thompson. It was a different arm on the shoulder earlier today from Julie Inkster. This fall, anywhere in the world when Americans are at risk, one team brings them home. The Brave, coming this fall on NBC. Whatever it takes, I love the in my I do whatever it takes, I love our I break the whatever it takes. You take me to the top, I'm ready for whatever it takes. 
between the guns. Down Only down Lexi down. Thompson knows what it took to turn this thing yeah. around, and they come down the fairway yeah. at 18. Yeah. She's got a one-up lead in the match. Over right, right at 61, no more. Just hitting this one shot here. Yeah, I can only see it's not spinning that much. Um, so a lot of the 61 check. Clarify that case, what's that for? That wind about five, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And then the wind's not hitting. Like, that's it. No, it's coming. I mean, it's, that's like a absolutely out of your shoes nine. You know? And the thing I mean, is, do you want... Do you want to put it up rather than try to get closer? Yeah. Can you tell me 74 back? I mean, that wind's picked up a little bit. Huh? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Classic carry. Absolutely. Going with nine iron from 174. Hmm. Breeze is helping and it's a little downhill. No room right, or very really little room right. shoulder of Lexi Thompson off that last tee and said, that's my girl. Earlier today, much different words of encouragement when she was four down after four holes played in this match and it looked like it was going to be a short day. Nordquist now. No consultation with the caddy at all. She's 20 yards closer, Terry, 154 yards, going with one more club. That's an eight iron. It'll be a little one. Trying to get it all the way back there. She is. Good looking shot. To the very end. <laughs> wow, indeed, Judy. You talk about players having to answer not only what the competitor does, what the other player does, but also within themselves. When you think it's over, it's done, you've lost it. And there's a piece of fire that they're missing this week with providing it from the sidelines. Yeah, for sure, but even we haven't seen many looks at her this week. Uh, this is the kind of shot that you can only play when you've got great numbers and, when, and also great determination. The same way you can roll a cut in the hole, you can make a good decision, decision and will yourself to hit a shot when you have to. This is a match that's going to be remembered for some time, no matter how it ends here. And it's not over yet. Anna Nordkiss basically played one hole where she was a little bit off, and that was the 13th hole. Yeah. Go back a hold of that tee at 17 and what she was having to deal with, and visibly shaken after losing, being down in the match for the first time, and Annika Sorenstam coming over to have a word with her and now having that answer at 18. Yeah, if she had any verbal exchange with Annika, we could not see it. Um, she simply looked straight ahead. and walking right alongside for these final couple of holes. Just picked up the coin so that putt conceded. And the gallery acknowledging that. Love to see that. 
Julie liked that move, you yep. could tell. That was classy. Yep. So it comes down to this. She started the day with a miss from maybe two feet. Terry, Judy, I didn't think she could possibly make more fans than she did at the ANA. The way she played after the rules debacle, the way she handled herself, and the way she conducted herself in those interviews as well. But I might be wrong. This has been one incredible display today of guts. Well, Chair, doing it against Europe's best player. And, and Judy, it's a unique player, a unique athlete who can do that to be so lost, shaken, confused and then turn on a dime and be unbeatable. I would say it's one of the, one of the hardest things to do in this sport um, because it is, it's, it's very hard to lose your concentration and ever recover it in the same way that it is when you're off to a good fresh start. And I know that Kevin has a lot to do with this, Maybe the word from the captain and the assistant captain back on the fifth hole had something to do with it. I don't know, but something got her playing again when all she thought about was what was coming up and not what she'd already done. Well, I'm not going to go too far with the analogy, but it, it, it's what people just marveled at when Jordan Spieth did what he did at Royal Birkdale because he was also lost and missing three and a half footers <laughs> and then to come home the way he did in what essentially came down the stretch is match play. You know, is this um, <laughs> is this perfectly described and what you're talking about with Jordan Spieth that golf is not a game of perfect it really is a game of how you finish. that is still to be decided here with this putt. Maybe, just maybe, fitting in the end. Begins Anna Nordquist did not deserve to lose based on how she played. Well, there's no doubt about that. Um, it, just, it just was the most amazing contest. And it really was the tale of two nines for Lexi Thompson. Might not be, but it sure feels like a win based on where she came from in this match. Back at 16 a moment ago, Mel Reed for birdie. Christy Kerr in there closer. Yeah, she's in there about 20 feet. This big momentum putt. Yes, it is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how cool is this? <laughs> well, you know I love watching it. So Kerr. I've looked now at Christy to have. Yeah, a little bit more break in her putt, but going up the slope. Both these players have really grinded during this match. Winning singles matches is never easy. Christy and Lexi clearly missed each other. But, um, and, and that might have been a little bit of a rocky start for Lexi. You, you, you've had this partner and you've been hammering it up and laughing a lot and all of a sudden it is absolutely serious. Got a moment, let's send it down to Grant with Julie. All right, Julie, uh, you didn't get the point, but what did Lexi's comeback do for your team? 
Oh, man, that, to me, that was like six points. You know, it was probably fittingly that they both got a half a point. Uh, they both played amazing. Uh, you know, Lexi started off, you know, slow. and But, you know, it just shows the heart of her and, and determination. You know, you, you think maybe she's out of it, and, and then all of a sudden a switch goes off, and that's a big half point for the U.S. team. And how classy uh, was Anna this week? Uh, she's, a, she's a great lady, and, you know, she's a great player. Um, her ball striking is amazing. I mean, they hit eight iron here, and knowing you have to do it to get a half a point, that's pretty gutsy. All right, let's send it to Jerry. A great phrase from the captain. Uh, Alexi, you left us speechless in the beginning for the wrong reasons, speechless in the end for the right reasons. Describe the range of emotions that you underwent today. Yeah, that was had to be the weirdest round of golf I've ever played. Um, front nine, I don't think I was awake, and the back nine, I just played lights out. I just, you know, being four down or three down going into the back nine, I was just like, I just have to go all in and go for it all, and uh, that's what I did. And then I think I shot six under total, two over on my front, and then what you said, eight under on my back. So it was just a crazy round, but Anna played great. I knew it was going to be a good match, so I'm just happy that I played the way I did on the back nine and fought strong. You got a little consultation from Nancy. Nancy Lopez, then you got a, a long consultation and hug from Captain Inkster. What did they say and how much did it help? Yeah, it helped me out a lot. I um, struggled my first few holes. I don't really know what was going on. And um, having them there for me, um, picking me up, just telling me to keep my head up and that I'm the best and I can do this and I can come back and make six birdies, seven birdies in a row. Um, it means the world to me to have them there for me. And, you know, that's what this event's all about, to have captains and assistant captains like that. Congratulations. That was one heck of a display, a match none of us will soon forget. <laughs> Thank you. Terry, thanks. She hasn't calmed down yet, has she, Jude? Did you notice her right hand quivering yeah. as she reached up to her visor? Um, you know, I, I think if you, if you haven't been in this scenario, and maybe you can imagine it, um, what this does to a uh, single player, and there's her mom, Judy. Man. Wonderful. Cancer battle and what she's done and come back out here. That's pretty cool. Kang for birdie to win the hole. <laughs> she's the queen of the 25 footer, isn't she? I know. Holy cow. That's just on, on repeat all week. I know. Two up. To 14, Michelle Wee, this for birdie to win the hole. Okay then. She's trailed throughout the match. Got it back to two down though. Four to play for Wee. 15. This is a birdie putt to win the hole for Katrina Matthew. And to get it back to all square time, she's been silently getting herself back in this match. And she's in it now. And all square with three to play. Katrina Matthew trailed by three after 11. Well, this is another one with a pretty big turnaround. Well, these matches early on need to go in Europe's favor if they're going to have any chance. Well, Chris had a great chance to earn the full point, but Thompson with that spectacular back nine. So the overall score is 11-6, 14 and a half is uh, what the U.S. needs to get to to win the cup outright. And obviously if it stayed like this, they would easily win. Let's hear from Anna Norquist now. She's with Jerry. Well, she just said the one thing I believe we're all feeling. I'm speechless after being part, a very important part of one of the most incredible matches ever. You don't show much emotion on the course, but you had to be feeling some. What were they? Yeah, I mean, um, just no words. Uh, really on the back nine, I play great all day. I've been playing good all week. Um, her making the, the shot for Eagle on 11 was very impressive. Um, and I hit a great shot in there. And then her making the putt on 15, didn't quite expect that. Um, but uh, the way she turned her around from a little bit of a rocky start um, was very impressive. And, you know, it's just been an incredible week. Uh, happy to hit a great eight iron in on the last and, and tie the match. But um, overall, just exhausted, completely exhausted right now. <laughs> I could imagine that. Eight, eight iron on the last was one of so many great shots out of you this week. And clutch putts at, at the most crucial times how much confidence do you gain from the way you performed this week even though you weren't feeling your best 
Um, well, today, I mean, I hit it really good and made quite a few birdies. Um, kind of got a little shaky there uh, in the middle, just watching her make birdies and eagles from from everywhere. Um, but I feel like, you know, she she gave me the chance uh, missing the putt on 17, um, and um, you know, I just hit a great shot in in on 18. But I feel like it was, it was a great match, and I'm very impressed of her back nine, and I'm just very proud of myself and my team this week. Can you both handle it with? great sportsmanship. Congratulations on an awesome match. Thank you, Jay. Another look at that shot coming home at 18. This is the definition of an answer. She's also the young woman who handled defeat in the playoff at the U.S. Open more than a year ago so gracefully. A reminder, Labor Day weekend, the FedEx Cup playoffs continue in Boston. The field will be down to 100 players, only 70 moving on. All looking to win the FedEx Cup. Coverage of the Dell Technologies Championship Friday, September 1st on Golf Channel. That was a match that has the best in golf tweeting at the moment. Sergio Garcia, that was an awesome match to watch. Congrats to both Anna Nordquist and Lexi Thompson on a great display of golf. Nobody deserved to lose. Got that right. And it was halved. So half a point on the board for both Europe and the United States. It's 11 to 6. And remember the U.S. needing to get to 14 to retain the Solheim Cup. The creamer was two up earlier in that match. With Hall, that's all square, and then Kerr with the lead, but some very tight matches coming down. Europe with the biggest leads in a couple of the late matches. Sagstrom and Saganda out to 15. And Angel Ian has this to win the hole. Birdie, so that's going to be a half, and Angel Yin remains one up with three to play. Good performance from Angel Yin, the rookie. And we'll go back to the 18th hole. So another match reaches this 18th hole, and Georgia Hall and Paula Creamer all square in the match. And Kay, it's Georgia Hall who will be first. It is, and Compared to the uber drama that was happening in the match ahead of ours, I guess ours is uh, sort of pales in comparison, but this has also been a very tight, hard-fought match. Georgia Halls, who, as we recall, went down early, two down after three holes. She's fought back, came alive. They've traded barbs on this last, this last nine and uh, hit quality shots. Georgia probably didn't hit the best eight iron in here and has left herself a good 30 feet. Paula Creamer has no more than 16, 17 feet for birdie. Paula's drawn uh, kind of young great players more than once. Um, I spoke about her beating Dame Laura Davies, but uh, she also caught Charlie Hall when she was really good and really young um and now and Char and georgia charlie hall beater. <laughs> charlie beater yeah charlie in, uh, beater colorado and then asked uh, asked her if she'd sign her golf ball mm -hmm. <laughs> well i am I'm very impressed with georgia and the way she has fought hard she was ob obviously nervous at the beginning didn't let it affect her and she's taken paula kramer to the 18th hole partisan U.S. crowd sensing a chance for Creamer now. Get back here in a moment. Drop back to 17. Well, Christy Kerr has a par putt here to win the match. And the first point, the 
four point goes to Christy Kerr in this single session. She goes 3 1 and 0 in her ninth Solheim Cup. Uh, Solheim Cup Korea, that win. So the U.S. two points away from retaining the Solheim Cup and a chance for Paula Creamer here at 18 to add to that total. It's, it's been remarkable watching her this week, the spring in her step, the energy, the enthusiasm, and just the total confidence in her game. Even when she makes a mistake, she didn't let it stick with her. She blow it off and uh, and play quite well on the next hole or the next shot. Her short game has been excellent. And this, uh, this putt, not a tremendous amount of movement. It's slightly uphill. She's had birdie putts the last uh, three holes, or last two holes that she has just missed. Seated in with a par, and Georgia Hall will have a putt here coming up. And remember, Creamer wasn't even one of the 12 members of the team. She was an alternate. Jessica Corda out, injured, and in steps Paula. And remember, two years ago, Paula was put in the anchor match position because Julie Inkster felt as though if it came down to the last match. She had complete confidence that Paula would make the putt that was needed to win. They have a very special relationship and an extreme amount of confidence Julie Inkster puts on Paula Creamer. And I see a lot of Paula Creamer in, in this young woman. She's a strong ball striker, great green reader, and a beautiful putter. And Judy, how many times growing up she had this putt in her mind to do something like this. To at least put a half a point up for Europe and her teammates. Well, usually it's for the U.S. Open, but uh, for her sake, I hope she imagined this one. No, never touched the hole. And it's Paula Creamer who will put another point up on the board for the United States. Had a feeling about midway through that match it would come right down to the final hole and a final putt. It did. And the U.S. oh so close now. You just do not get away with free putting when you're in the arena with the best players in the world. It was the first putt that did her in there. Yep, so it's 13 points up there for the U.S. Creamer with the one-up win over Hall. Kerr with the two-and-one win over Mel Reed, and she is down there now available, Jared. Thank you, Terry. Christy, we were just talking. I think everything switched at number 10, but in your opinion, was that where the match really switched? Absolutely. I mean, I did not expect her to putt it off the green. Let's put it that way. But, you know, I mean, that's what being a great putter is all about, right? Because even if you have that 5-6 footer, they know you're going to make it, right? So they have to give it a run to try to get up, and with a dangerous hole location like that, it just worked out in my favor this time. Did you know where, where you stood or the team stood, actually, while you were playing at any point? Today. Um, more towards the end when we finished, um, but you know, I mean, Mel's such a great player. I just had to take, I had to try to take control of my match, and that was the momentum that we needed. And I felt kind of a little tight on the front and wasn't swinging at it aggressively. And then when that got me going, I started hitting it a lot better. Well, thank. We know you want to get out there. Good playing, and congratulations. And go ahead and cheer them on. Go USA! Well, on their way. Back to you, Terry. Thank you, Jim. As we check out our Worth Talking About, presented by Consumer Cellular, Christy Kerr, not only just uh, keeps going strong in the Solheim Cup, nine of them now, but number one on the points list for the United States. She is still the only player that I can think of 
that ever said or says favorite club in my bag is my putter <laughs> and yeah not afraid to say it you're yeah. right Sal Paula Creamer up there 19 and a half and she is standing by with Kay thanks very much uh, Paula congratulations putting another point on the board for Team USA Georgia came out struggling a little bit you were up in the match then she found her game you guys had a tight back and forth what part of your vast experience playing the Solheim Cup did you draw upon to get it done in the end I think just confidence um, you know she's a rookie and she played all five matches this week and she played awesome and uh, you know I knew that she was gonna be a fighter um, you know I see a lot of me and her uh, you know just that grinder doesn't matter where it's at and I knew if I just kept putting the pressure on kept putting the pressure on and if I missed a shot you know it's okay let's get up and down that kind of thing and really just try to stay in tunnel vision with my caddy Brooker and you know I kind of missed some shots out there and then he and I fixed it and uh, it's it's, uh, it's an unfortunate finish for her because she really did play well and we deserve to have that match. I my hat off to her because you know she made me work for it and I made her work for it and that's what you want in, you know, in a match. Your game has been wonderful this week. What is it about the Solheim Cup that brings out the best in Paula Creamer? Um, well, these crowds are awesome. Um, you know, yeah, I, I just, I didn't want to let anybody down. Um, you know, I felt like I had a lot of pressure in Germany, and there was, this was way more pressure than that. Um, you know, being an alternate is a, a tough job to, to fill, and, you know, for Julie to play me four matches, um, you know, I knew my game was there, but obviously, you know, it didn't look like it was and uh, I had a great partner, Austin, and our team. They just, you know, they helped motivate me. This is just such a good win for, you know, just for me and uh, for women's golf. I think everybody showcased themselves well. Well, you proved yourself once again in your seventh Solheim Cup. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Thanks, Kay. And we saw her on that list, 19 and a half points right behind Christy Kerr. Another hug from the captain to Lexi Thompson, who earned that half somehow, some way in the opening match. It is that time of the year, Thursday, September 7th, the Super Bowl champs. The Patriots hosting the Chiefs for NFL kickoff on NBC, and then it's Giants-Cowboys in the premiere of Sunday Night Football. The season begins September 7th only on NBC. Sunday singles continue, and the U.S. oh so close to retaining the Solheim Cup. They just need one point at this point. And so those matches, pretty close to Lewis, all square with Matthew, Angel Yin, one up with Karini Shea. And Karini Shea, this for birdie to win the hole. Jerry? And square the match. Angel Yin still three feet away for par. Mm. Up to 17. Let's check in with this match where Katrina Matthew has a birdie putt to win the hole, Karen. And Stacey Lewis is, still has a four footer for her par. Katrina's actually had some good opportunities these last few holes, too. Certainly on the last, missed one there. But it's been quite amazing. She's been really slowly and quietly putting herself back into this position. This to go one up. Sixteen Angel Yin for par. See the mark of Karim Shea. Oh, said pick it up. Wow. Pretty good move right there. So Angel, the 18-year-old from Southern California, one up, two to play. Stacy Lewis working on this pop up to halve the hole. Pretty solid, Tom, with this range most of the day. Hasn't looked too uncomfortable over them either. You know, I have to say, um, in, in my seat, I think periodically how great it would be to be a good player again and to be in the midst of this. But I am actually so grateful um, to be where I am in life and in golf where I can totally appreciate what these people do. And I do totally appreciate it. Oh, that stays out to the right. And so Katrina Matthew sneaks a one-up lead going to the 18th tee. Well, there's still a chance that the Europeans could win the Solheim Cup, but it's pretty slim. 
there's always a chance. Today's coverage of the Solheim Cup is brought to you by Consumer Cellular. Never pay more for wireless service than you need. Pure Silk. Shake up your shave with new Pure Silk razors. Volunteers of America. Helping America's most vulnerable. And by DuPont. The 17th hole. Jerry Fultz has now dropped back to this match. And Karina Shea has missed the green. Well, right. And tough spot in the rough. This is a six iron for Angel. Very high. This to right of the green just a bit. That's going to stay in the short grass, which is pretty much like the putting green. You can put it from there, no problem. Tom, well, they walk up to the green there. We checked that board in the U.S. one point away from closing it out, retaining the cup. They only need 14. Europe needs 14 and a half to win the cup. The U.S. Hemming won it two years ago in Germany. Let's take a look, Judy, at today's Pure Silk Smooth performance. And it was not only smooth, it was a classic. Head-to-head, -head, back and forth. Well, not back and forth from the start. It was Nordquist. He had complete control early on in this one. Yeah, all Anna on the front nine. She had a four-up lead after four holes. Makes that to get it back to a four-up lead to make the turn. And then a different player showed up on the back nine, including this from Thompson at 11. All Lexi on the back nine. And, and that right there will be the defining moment of that match, the turnaround for her. That was the emotional turnaround, but... But she wasn't yet done by any stretch. Right. I actually think... Um, well, this was a magnificent hole. It's the longest part four in the course. She absolutely smashed the tee shot and hit a pitching wedge. After making an important putt at 12, then it comes down to 15. 15 has been a bit of a hole in uh, big events this year. The second angle, Eagle won her for half a point. You, you think it comes down to that putt right there? I think that putt right there did it. And then this for Birdie to win the hole at 16. The first time all day she would lead in the match. But there was still an answer from Nordquist. Lexi up there on the green, a makeable putt, but fairly far away. This one just all over it. And eventually that putt was conceded for a birdie. So it came down to a putt from Thompson that didn't go in, and that would be it. A match that's halved in the end. Half a point on the board for both our pure silk smooth performance. And that's a match that will be remembered for some time. Something else. Out to 15. Is that Silas has this to go two up in the match? Yeah, just a little uh, three-footer. And the U.S. victory is getting closer and closer here in West Des Moines. Let's go to 17, and Kahini Shea is first to play. Downhill lie in the rough green slopes away past the hole. It runs away. Very delicate chip. That's Very a nice play. nice touch. Andrew Yin will have a chance to win the match. And we'll go to the 18th. Katrina Matthew, that ball in the heavy rough. It's very thick around the ball. The ball is above her feet from 159. Just got to try and get this to chase. It is going left. Oh, what a good shot. Yeah, not too far left, though. That is really good from there. Katrina, who is down in the match now, one up as they play 18. <laughs> You're at 16. Masson with two putts to win the match. Yeah, 700 on a round. A tough go up until today for Caroline Masson, but that'll do it. Closes out Michelle Lee three and two. She was 0-3 and 0 up until today. Played better than that record, but now earns a point on the board to 17. And Angel Yin, the 
putting from just off the green here. Technically, this is to win the match. And to close out the cup, if this were to somehow drop. She was somewhat of a wild card pick, being uh, really a legitimate rookie on the LPGA Tour. But she was also very close to qualifying um, via the Rolex rankings. technically to uh, get to 14 points which would retain the cup. Oh, the second for Lewis at 18 now. Took relief from a drainage dish from 155. Got to win the hole for a half. And it has an opportunity now. Yeah, ended up with quite a decent lie after dropping. One down in that match, Katrina Matthew on the green, but much farther away as we drop back to Yin. Yeah, well, things could change here because this putt is for par. And Karine Ishe also has a par putt upcoming. A little bit inside of this, not much. They're both tricky. They're both downhill, very speedy. But if Angel Yin makes this, it secures at least a half a point for the U.S. side, guaranteed. A point and a half to win the Solheim Cup. I don't think that will be conceded. There have been some quite generous concessions in this match, but I'm not sure he's shaken go that far. Now they're going to figure out who's farther away. And don't you hate it when they say you're still away? <laughs> I'm going to bring in Pete Liss from the LPGA Tour, who's the referee in this match, and he has determined that it is Karine who will be putting first to win the hole and take the match back to all square. Meanwhile, we're going to go to the 18th. Katrina Matthew, this for birdie to close it out. Back uphill, back down towards the hole. Hasn't made hardly any putt all day today. Everything's been really close, burning the edges. But you just have to admire her competitiveness to have got back in the game. She was three down on the 13th hole. Seated for a par, Lewis will have a birdie putt to have the match, win the hole. And he's Shea now to win the hole. So three wins the hole at 17, that takes the match back to all square and Europe have a chance to win the full point here. And that will be a nervy 18th hole for both players. And I'm not so sure that either player would have ever played in front of that sort of a crowd walking down the 18th. Incredible scene. So Stacy Lewis will take every angle of a look at this for Birdie to have the match. It was three up in this a couple of different times. It's Katrina Matthew, the veteran, 47 years old, stepped in for Suzanne Pedersen and wins a Sunday singles match over Stacey Lewis. She's not very far from 48, and uh, this is a big thing for her. She was an assistant captain. They did suggest that maybe she just should bring her clubs with her in case. <laughs> uh, all right. 
to the tee at 18. This match heads here. And our Trackman Tracer technology presented by Rolex will give us a look at the tee shots. All square is Shea and Yin. Yep. Breeze picking up, helping from the left. This looks to be the ideal line. And it is. Judy, the U.S. keeps flirting with it, but can't quite get to 14 yet. I guess that just you know, speaks to a lot of really good golf. Judy, how about this play? Driver for Angel, yeah, a fairway that just bends around the corner. It has to land in the perfect spot to find the short grass carrying over those right bunkers. Yeah, she's going to take on the corner here at 18. I venture to guess this could get relatively close to the green if she pulls it off. Rolex Trackman Tracer technology. Oh, I think she looks great. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Never even looked at it either. Carried it 270. You're not going to see anybody down there off the tee besides her. So that match coming down to 18 in those second shots when we come back in the U.S. one point away. Europe still with a bunch of blue up there on the board and a chance. Back on the green at 16, Jody Ewart shot off, birdie putt on the way. So you've got Lizette Salas with a birdie putt, and this could close it out, Kay. It could, and uh, boy, that was a super roll. She had the line, and the thing you hate to do, leave it short. She's uh, not happy with herself that she didn't get that a legitimate chance. Hmm. So, Salas, two up, as they play 16, if she were to make this, it would retain the Solheim Cup for the United States. Is that all? That's all. <laughs> I wonder if she's fully aware of that. My, a lot of times players are so into their cocoon and their moment, just worrying about their opponent or what they need to execute, that they're not really thinking big picture like that. Although there is a scoreboard short left of this green. This is a tricky little putt, um, as most of these are. I read it to go a little right to left and then trail back to the right at the end, at the end so essentially a mini double breaker. It's been pretty good with the putter this entire weekend. extensive Solheim Cup record, but she hasn't lost in the singles. Session there, we jump up to this final hole. 18 and Angel Yin way down there in the fairway. 55 yards ahead of her opponent, Karini Shea, who's already played to about 40, 45 feet short and right of the hole. So door wide open here for Angel Yin, just 101 yards remaining in the hole. If it were to somehow go in. Needs to go a little bit. Remember a match that's all square, so Angel Yin, another player from Southern California with a chance to close it out for the United States and retain the Solheim Cup. She'll have a birdie putt when she gets up there, but first it'll be Karini Shea from France with a longer putt. 13 to eight, one point away. Oh, so close. In Des Moines. 
So here's the deal at 18. Angel Yin, Karini Shea, if this match is halved, the U.S. retains the cut because Lizette Salas is two up, two to play. She's guaranteed a half a point. Pretty much, Karini Shea has to make this, you would think. Yeah, that makes it tough to define who gets credit for the clinching putt, though, Terry. <laughs> right. <laughs> Big, huge, deep breath, very quick green, especially past the hole, turning a little left. Not quite. And you wonder if the players themselves know. Probably not. I'm going to say not. They, of course, they know they're flirting around yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Um, particularly Angel. That's not something she needs to know right now. Just go ahead and make it. Yeah. Just, just do your job. As they say, do everything you can do to win your match. This would do just that, Jerry. Yeah, not a lot of break into that I can see. She looked at a spot just a little left of the direct line to the hole with her caddy. He agreed. Huge moment for her. She's going to have to putt that. Oh. <laughs> what did we say about flirting with it, but not quite? So we Shay in with a par. This for a par. And retaining the Solheim Cup. And pretty... Pretty much the same putt we saw from, who was it, Georgia Hall earlier. And that stayed left. This didn't do hardly a thing rolling past the hole, just the tiniest break to the right on the first putt, so dead center it doesn't miss. Right center is fine as well, I would think. I don't know if I believe the writing on the cup, but celebration's already underway. for the real cup. The Solheim Cup will stay in the hands of the U.S. Angel Yin with the putt at 18 that she had to make to have the match with Karini Shea. Salas guaranteed a half a point up there for the United States in a match that is still on the course. And they have now captured two in a row, Judy. I tell you, Julie Angster has uh, worked so hard towards this goal um, ever since she knew she was going to captain for the second time. And uh, she's just been a classically wonderful captain for these players. You know, the captain is a mentor, the captain is a teacher, the captain is a nurse, the captain is a mom, the captain um, is a psychologist, the captain is just everything um, that you can imagine. Nancy Lopez with the hug. She was an assistant captain back in Germany in 2015. Nancy Lopez cries. Always cries. Here she goes. <laughs> That's why she said you're going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Ball the cream, a part of another win. Oh, my goodness. We won. Over. And, and a bit of confusion because, remember, the Salas match is still out there. So it took them a while, really, to realize that I think the gallery knew it here at 18. They've been following the board, but some of the players spread out across the course. 
And how about an 18 year old in her first trip to the Solheim Cup and what she's done this week? As we send it over to Jerry. And she didn't know that that will go down technically as the clinching putt because Salas is guaranteed a half point until just now. So how was your first Solheim Cup? Pretty amazing, I have to say. It's uh, very different. I don't, I've never seen this many people in the crowd before. Did it affect the nerves all week long? No. I, honestly, no. I just, uh, well, it made me hit it further than I've ever hit in my life. Uh, and putting it harder, too. <laughs> but I wasn't nervous. I was just more excited. And the adrenaline was pumping. You guys, you've now uh, forged relationships with your teammates that'll last a lifetime. Congratulations on an awesome week, and congratulations to your team. Thank you. 1-1-1 one, one, and one in her first trip to the Solheim Cup. Everybody getting into the act on the team for the U.S. this week to 17. Jody Hewitt shut off to extend the match. And neither of these players knowing what's going on or what just happened. Well, she made it. So they are going to go down the 18. Well, it's great for the crowd. So the U.S. team guaranteed to get to that 14 point mark but they want to get to 14 and a half yeah as a team you want to get there because you want to say we won the Solheim Cup but it will stay in their hands no matter what well, that's how things stand right now time now for some captain's insights presented by DuPont as we send it over to Grant Terry, thank you. Julie, it was your 18-year-old captain's pick who ultimately gets that winning point for you. What does that say? Well, you know, uh, I'm just proud of my team. I mean, the Europeans fought hard today. They made it really close. Um, I really haven't been nervous all week, but today I was a little bit nervous. So uh, it's, uh, it's just an honor to captain this team, and I'm really proud of the girls. You gave them a lunch pail two years ago in Germany. You gave them a hard hat and told them to go to work this week. How did they do it? You know what? They just bonded. They, they just believed in each other. They played for the person behind them, in front of them, and uh, they played in a, some amazing golf. You're looking around here at your daughters and your husband, Brian. You mentioned on Thursday in the opening ceremony, family, and you got a little emotional. What does it mean to do it in front of all of them and all of the families? Well, they're a big part of my success, and, uh, you know, I couldn't be where I am without them. So it's not only my family, but I got a lot of great friends here, and, and I call ourselves a team, too. So we call ourselves the core group, and they're all here this week. You joined Judy Rankin as the only women to captain back-to-back -back successful Solheim Cup teams. Anytime I can be in the company of Judy Rankin, I'm feeling honored. She's done it. Julie Inkster, the winning captain. Thank you. You know what? I agree with her, too. Time now for some captain's insights presented by DuPont, Judy. From the former captain in 96 and 98. You know, she played for me, and um, uh, I, I will tell you that Julie Inkster means a lot to me. Um, but I wanted to tell you one little, one little Julie Inkster story when they went to Germany, which I know has um, spilled over into this, and that is she told those players to do their nails and all that funky stuff before they ever got there, because it was going to be about golf once they arrived on the scene. And uh, she changed the mentality a little bit and all for the good. You think back to 2013 in Colorado, to Germany the last time, and now in 2017. Some kind of change, yep. So the United States will keep the cup at least two more years till they meet again at Glen Eagles in Scotland. Angel Yin making sure of that, but just to make it official and to actually win the cup, take you out to Lizette Salas and her finish in the match. The player from Southern California for par to win it at 18 over Jody Ewart Shadoff. Got to be happy for her. Yeah, very happy for her. She's uh, in her own way become a little bit of a veteran now. Her second win in singles at the Solheim Cup. Her caddy, good friend Benito, draping the flag across her shoulders. Jarena Pillar for birdie to win the match over Florentina Parker. And remember what she did two years ago with the putt over Caroline Masson, the win at 18 to keep everything alive for the U.S. Yeah, she made a putt of just about that length that was absolutely critical. So the final tally for the United States, 16 and a half to 11 and a half. They needed 14 to keep it, and they get more than they needed. Danielle Kane with the win, the rookie, the Solheim Cup, over Emily 
Pedersen. So an outstanding week here wraps up in Des Moines. Um, everybody got into the act. Every player for the United States won at least one match. What's your takeaway from the week? Um, I just think it was a great week. Um, I think you went into the singles with a lot of people thinking this is already decided, but the fact is it wasn't decided. The fact is um, we had a lot of golf that was great to watch today and very riveting. The Solheim Cup once again delivered. And we won't forget that opening match anytime soon. Anna Nordquist and Lexi Thompson, they eventually have the match, yeah. but I mean, what a comeback for Thompson. What a second shot at 18 for Anna Nordquist. That's Outstanding. Right. And uh, always a pleasure and a privilege to be with you here, Jude. I enjoyed it with you. I enjoyed Des Moines. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been fantastic. So we say goodbye from Des Moines and the 2017 Solheim Cup coming up next. Except on the West Coast, it's your local news. Tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, American Cup champion Reagan Smith looks for her first national title at the PG Gymnastics Championships. Thanks, Iowa. It has been terrific. And thank you for joining us here at the Solheim Cup. So long, everybody.